Hey everyone, and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this episode, we have James who wanted to share his paranormal encounters. I know a lot of people do not believe this should be included into a Sasquatch channel, but I do. Bigfoot is a cryptid creature, and I have had many paranormal experiences in my life, including Sasquatch encounters. Were they related? No, but could there be a deeper meaning behind my Sasquatch encounters and paranormal experiences? I'm always open to that, and I always wonder about it. James claims he was camping in the forest when he encountered a Wendigo creature and its three young. The half-man, half-beast looked at him with what he described to be big red glowing eyes. Wendigos are often reported to have a giant trophy-sized non-typical rack. He also opens up and talks about an entity he once seen with glowing red eyes. If you have a cryptid encounter you would like to talk about, please contact me at sasquatchtheory at outlook.com. Alright guys, with all of that being said, let's get straight into this next cryptid encounter right here on Sasquatch Theory. Alright James, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. How are you doing today? Good, how are you doing? Oh, pretty good, not too bad. James, you contacted me and mentioned that you encountered a cryptid, and it was an odd one. You said that you saw a deer man. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and the encounter that you experienced? Yeah, so uh, my name is James. Um, been in been in the trades my whole life, uh, working with my hands. Um, I was in having in 2016 the Poconos. Um, honestly, I, I was down on my luck. I couldn't really find much work. Um, ended up losing my place, and it was summertime, so I was I was camping out in woods and just saving up money to try and get get enough to get a, a place for the you know foreseeable future. Um, so I was working, and then I would I would go back to my campsite. And uh, there was a there was a water source nearby, um, and I had been there for a couple weeks. Um, really weird things would happen at night. Like, I would I would go to sleep, my cell phone would be fully charged. I wake up, it's completely dead, and I'd be like, I, I, there's nothing wrong with the battery; it holds a charge. So this went on for four or five nights. Um, woke up on like a Saturday or a Sunday because I didn't have work. And I heard something walking around outside and, you know, on like a tent when you can zipper down like the inside fold to reveal like the mesh and you can see outside this, this, uh, this thing was huge. It was like the rack of antlers on it were huge. It, it was like a, like a 12 point buck. Like it was like, <laughs> it was like a prize buck antler rack, but it had, it was, a. Uh, it had the the body of a deer, like a like the full four legs, and they were bent like they were bent the wrong way. They didn't. It wasn't like a normal deer. It it, it the, the the lower legs were bent the wrong way. Had the chest of a man and like totally ripped, basically from the belly button up. It was like just a bare skin, huge pecs, huge upper body. The rack on it was huge. It had these huge red eyes. And like when I saw it, I couldn't take my eyes off it because I was like, Am I, this isn't, <laughs> I'm really seeing this thing right now. And uh, I was intent and not making any noise. And it looked right at me. And it had, it had three little ones with it, like young. And you could tell that they had this start of an antler rack. They were just like nubs sticking out the top. And uh, I was scared to death. I didn't move, didn't make a noise. This thing looked right at me, knew it was looking at me. I could feel like it just 
did locked eyes and then and uh it was it was like like 10 seconds of eye lock and then the young ones turned their heads and their eyes were black but this thing's eyes were like bright red and uh it took off basically i mean like the fastest deer that you could imagine full sprint just from a standing position and you could hear the hooves beating through the woods and it left the young left um right after that i got extremely sick to the point where over the course of the next two days i had to call 911 to come pick me up i was brought to the hospital they asked me if i had almost drowned and uh, i was like now i'm drowned what are you talking about they're like well you have a severe lung infection in your back and this is what we see in people that almost drowned like you're the not your lungs are filled with water but the outside like this i don't know what you call it like the sac that holds all the vital organs i was laid up they, they tried to stick me in the mri tube and i couldn't i couldn't uh i couldn't lay down flat and the last thing i remember was he tried to lay me flat and i popped back up smacked my head off the mr machine and lay down and they busted like hit me with some demerol or something because i was out um when uh, basically I woke up in the hospital and they told me that they had to do emergency surgery. They had to like cut my back open. They went in between a couple ribs and they pulled out a liter and a half of fluid. So I recuperated. I was in there for like six days, a walker, a bedpan, all that stuff. And they just kept asking me like, did why was I in water? Like just kept asking me, like, why did you how'd you almost drown? I, I I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't been in a pool. I haven't been anywhere. Um I don't know. I feel like uh like me seeing this thing, me encountering it was like it kind of like put a hex or a curse on me or something because I saw I met the surgeon after the surgery. He goes, I've never I can't believe that you're alive right now, honestly. He's like, I didn't have to break any of your ribs to get in there, but uh, I, I can't believe that you're alive. You, sh you probably shouldn't be here right now. So um, that that's it. It's just, it, it's just crazy to think about that. Like the eyes were just, and this was like morning, probably like 7 a.m. when I saw this thing. And uh, I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I was just like frozen looking at it. That's, it's crazy to think about. I was to get goosebumps just thinking about all that stuff, but. Yeah, that was it. Okay. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with all of us. And if you don't mind, I'm ready to ask a few questions. Sure. Okay. So what do you call this creature or creatures that you encountered? What do you think they are? I, deer man. That That's the only way to put it. It's like, it's deer man. It's got, it's got the lower body of a deer, huge rack of antlers. Um, and arms that had human arms, but they were like, they were, he was jacked, like, like a, like a weightlifter, like a bodybuilder. I noticed that you call the creatures you encountered deer man. Is there a reason you call it that? I normally just focus on Bigfoot encounters, cryptid encounters, and sometimes I'm open to these such things. Could there be any chance that you encountered a Wendigo and are you just calling it deer man to avoid saying the word Wendigo? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, extremely unnerving to think that, uh, I came in close contact with one of those things, but yeah. Is that what you think it is? I mean, uh, after what happened to me medically is, yeah, there's, there's a good chance that that could possibly be. I, I don't really know of anyone having some serious medical condition arise right after encountering one of a, a cryptid, but yeah. The medical condition, do you think the creature caused this, or was there something that happened when you were camping out in the woods? No, I, like, I'm, uh, I've camped a lot. Uh, I know about cleansing water, boiling water, and honestly, it was. it's not like not camping i brought fresh water I'm, you know what i mean it wasn't like i'm boiling water out of a stream to even cook with i brought in all my own stuff um 
I don't think it was anything like that. I was, I was buying a lot of food, you know what I mean? It just, it wasn't cooking over an open fire. And like, I think, uh, I think that thing caused it. Okay. Did they make any noise and could you smell anything? So the, there was no smell and, and this thing was completely silent. I mean, I don't kind of like where, where my tent was, it was, uh, it was kind of like lower down and there was, it was light brush around. Um, but, uh, no, I didn't, I didn't smell anything. And, uh, this thing was like silent other than just the, the foot falls walking around out there and like some leaves crunching, but now nah, there was no like scream or, or smell or anything like that. No noise associated with it. I don't know. Maybe cause at it's young, like there was definitely three young with it. It didn't want to agitate the situation i don't know but when they locked eyes with me that was it It was just just footfalls and and no no noise no smell okay could you see them blinking could you see their chest breathing you know going up and down yeah they were i mean it it sounds weird it was it was almost like they were kind of like the young were playing and this thing was walking through the woods definitely see it breathing um and uh when it when it looked at me, I think when it realized that someone was watching it, this thing, it did not blink. It was just like that stare until it basically turned and left. Okay. Could you see its breath, any steam coming out of the nostrils? No, it was, it was summertime. It was August and it was, it was warm, like a late, like you know, August in the Poconos. It's not, it's like probably 9 a.m. So the sun's already been up for a while. It wasn't like that. Okay. And what state is this? Pennsylvania. Okay. And it's the Poconos National Forest or State Park? No, it was. Uh, that's just a general location in Poconos. Okay. Now, you have to be honest with me here. Have you been having paranormal experiences prior to this encounter? Uh, not so with something so blatant like that, I think I could feel like, you know, you live in a haunted house, you hear like weird knocks and stuff. I've, something like that, maybe, yeah, um, but nothing to that extent. Okay, so you have experienced like strange phenomenon in your house, such as knocks, shadow people, right. anything like that? The, the knocking, yeah. Um, okay. uh, since then, <laughs> after that, kind of opened up a little bit more to be honest with you, but that, that seemed like the initial start of a lot more. Okay. So certain events happened after this when to go encounter. Yeah. I, uh, so, uh, five years, uh, five, about four or five years later, um, moved out of that area, moved to another place, <clears throat> moved into house by a Creek and, uh, I had this neighbor and he would do like weird stuff. He had like a garden and he had a, like a urn, like a, uh, what do they call it? Like a witch's cauldron. Right. And he would bring this stuff out and he would burn it and it would, it would smell that smelled so bad. I actually complained a couple of times to the township about it. It was horrible. But anyway, so he would do weird things. He'd like, start up his lawnmower like right next to my window and like throttle up throttle down throttle up throttle down just like super annoying um the one night uh so there was a storm um i heard like a huge bang on the corner of the house so i go outside flashlight because there was like an older pine tree out there I just wanted to make sure it didn't hit the house or anything so i go out there shining the light nothing walk back in the house as i break the, like, the doorway, the entryway. Like as soon as I close the door behind me, like three loud knocks on the side of the door. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, oh, nah, this isn't good. So rip the door open. No one's there. I call the cops. Please show up. I'm like, dude, my neighbor. And like, there's already been like a little bit of got back and forth with the neighbor. So I'm like, this guy, I think he's knocking on my house. Like he's banging on my door. So the cop goes over there. The policeman goes over there. He knocks on his door. <clears throat> the cop was probably there for about 10 seconds. And he, uh, 
<laughs> he basically ran from his front door to his cruiser and tore down this dirt dirt road like stones flying like you see ripped out of there so i'm like all right that's really weird um so i'm uh i'm sitting there at the kitchen table storms going on and uh i hear so i have like a sunroom in the front half and that door uh the doorway was kind of not the greatest so i um i locked it and then put like this was prior put like two by fours across the door so you couldn't just push it open because essentially you could um and i'm standing there and i hear something scratching like at the door and the window had a partial like just a drapery kind of thing and i'm hearing this noise and i can't see it so i turn around and i pick up mossberg 500 and i'm holding it and i'm expecting someone or something to make a noise i'm gonna basically just kind of ripped the window open dude i pulled the drapery back and i looked out and here's my neighbor with these huge red eyes and like they're massively red like they're they were just like bright and i freaked out i was like you need to get the hell out of here or uh you're gonna have like no i don't want to curse but you're gonna have some problems on your hands so this guy kind of like slinks away from the window and I call the cops back and I'm like, this guy just attempted to break into my front door. And the 911 dispatcher said, hold on a second. Someone wants to talk to you. The, the phone that I'm on hold and uh, this other guy gets on the line. He goes, tell me what and like, I couldn't even talk at this point. I'm like, wow, like freaking out over what I saw. This guy on the other end of the phone, tell me what you saw. What did he look like? What do you like? I'm just like, I, I'm just like not even making sense. He goes, tell us what you saw. He, he goes, like, all I saw was gray hair, a gray shirt, and these big red eyes. You look like a goddamn vampire. And the cop goes, that's exactly what I was told. Remain in your house. Keep the door locked. Don't go outside until tomorrow morning. And I was like, don't go outside. I'm moving out of here tomorrow morning. I literally packed all my stuff and moved out like the next day. I don't know, it's just, it follows you around. I think once you get marked, you get marked and it's just, you encounter these crazy things after that. It was, it was insane. That, that night will, I'll never forget that night. I'm, <laughs> I'm breathing heavy right now like it just happened. That was wild. Yeah, that is frightening. And I appreciate you sharing that with me. I don't know what I'd do if I encountered something like that. Do you think possibly, it was a demonic entity um yeah that uh so whatever whatever that house had going on or i think uh i think that um so so demons you know they don't attach themselves to you i i personally believe in jesus christ so like when you walk with the light of christ they can see that um and when Unfortunately, you get exposed to that that dark side. They tend to gravitate towards you, and they I think they they feed off your energy. I know that thing probably fed like crazy. It was probably good for a year after that. I, I was hyperventilating on the floor, holding a Mossberg 500 like in the corner of my whole <laughs> in the corner of my kitchen, just like looking for a good couple hours. Mm, I think yeah. I think it is demonic. Yeah, definitely. Well, that makes sense. Now I understand why you kept calling it Deer Man. You don't want to say the name. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't don't want to bring that that back <laughs> at all. That's it's uh it's very scary. Okay. Yeah, I understand and I'll respect that and I'll call it Deer Man as well, just because I don't want to bring it around either. And yeah, I'm not gonna judge your story. I'm gonna remain open minded just because I've had a lot of strange encounters in my life as well. It's, uh, it's something that that stays with you, and you don't ever forget it. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think about these encounters every day of your life or just every now and then? Well, um, so when I first met my wife, uh, it, it's not something that you really want to tell someone. You know what I mean? Like, you're not really open to it. And then one night we were watching something and I was like, yeah, I saw something like that. And she was like, no, you didn't. I was like, no, nah, I did. And then I told it to her 
and she made me draw a picture of it. <laughs> and I still have the picture that I drew like three years ago. Um, that helped a lot because it's like, you can't, like you could tell someone what you saw, but in, I don't know. It's like visually depicted. And it's like, <laughs> this is what it was. It helps you get it out a little bit. Um, uh, but it was, it's something that will definitely stay around. Something that you don't like to think about. Yeah, absolutely. You need to write these incidents down, maybe create a book or something. But I hear that writing traumatic events down helps you cope with the events. Yeah, I've, uh, I'm, I'm not against that. Uh, anything, anything is better than uh, holding that inside because it's just like, and then you're also afraid of people are going to just think you're crazy. I mean, I'm not crazy. I know exactly what I saw, <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, it's something else. Okay. So you contacted me and, and like I said, I mainly stick to the Bigfoot topic, but I want to ask you, what do you think these creatures and beings are, including Sasquatch? Do you think that there's some type of genetical manipulation going on on planet earth? I, I think, um, I think they're an affiliate. I think they're the fallen ones, uh, that the Bible talks about. Um, because, you know, like uh, demons can't just inhabit anything. You know, they need a they need a body to to walk around. And Sasquatch is the there's more than I think in my book there's more than enough evidence to say it's not just uh, half man half ape in the woods. Um, I think that they're 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 genetic manipulations, but not of uh, the government. I think that it's a fallen angel technology, Nephilim, that were left behind after the flood. And uh, and they're used as just a vessel for demons to inhabit. Yeah, I agree. We see all these ancient civilizations and people still today can't figure out how some of these buildings were created. And I think they were made by giants and it's exactly how the Bible says it happened. I, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, there's, there's, there's too much evidence for that. And, uh, people that want to say, oh, this, you know, they're just <laughs> something that evolved over time. No way. No, nah, that, that's, there's n God never mean for, for a, a deer and a man crossbreed. Like, no, this is not something that's natural to a habitat. There's no way. Yeah. And it makes sense because you always hear that Satan wants to corrupt the seed of man. And we think of it as just of, our, you know, our sins, you know, and I think it goes a lot deeper than that, you know, changing creation itself, you know, animals, humans, and not just our ways as far as emotions and how we treat each other. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the number one trick that the devil pulled was to make everyone think he doesn't exist. Okay. And then you can throw all of the cryptids in that too, because we're, they're not supposed to exist. Oh no, that's just all stories, you know, but it's, it's true. And that's why, because those things are out there and they, I think they, they definitely feed off the fear that they, they can feel it. They pick up on it and they, they, they live off that, that energy transfer. Yeah, I agree. And in the Bible, and even if you don't believe in the Bible, it says that man has dominion on the animals of the earth it doesn't say it exactly like that but we don't have dominion over the sasquatch or the cryptids so i feel like they're not just some unknown creatures that are living on this planet because if it was like that they would be in bass pro they'd be they'd be hunted down and filmed by photographers that's how i feel yeah i mean if it was uh if any of them were something that could physically shot and brought in i it probably should have happened by now i mean how many deer hunters are there in america how many you know like just there's no way that these things can uh, phase in and out of reality or do half of the things that uh people say that they have that's why i, I told i don't discount anyone's story um if you if you've seen it you you would know what that feels like when you see something that is not supposed to exist but it's there in front of you uh, 
much. Yeah. They say the giants of the old days had supernatural abilities, yet, you know, they could be killed just like the story of David and Goliath. That, uh, yeah. Um, there's, uh, there's no way that, uh, you know, um, all of these separate ancient civilizations kind of come to a consensus as far as like native American tribes talking about Sasquatch. Um, you get like the (laughs) other stories of the giants, like red haired giants walking around. Um, there's, that's something different. I think, I think giant, I think humans probably were a lot bigger back then. And then there was some kind of stunting, but, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a difference between a extra large human and then something in the woods that can <laughs> creep up on you out of nowhere and then phase out of existence. Or it's just, uh, this thing didn't really phase. It just walked away. It was really quiet. It was just wild though. Like, nah, this thing was definitely, definitely not a, uh, creation of God in my book. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've heard stranger stories. I've listened to, um, the mountain men stories on Sasquatch Chronicles and people in Alaska claim to see these giant humans that are like, I want to say like 17 to 19 feet tall, maybe taller. And it's just wild to think that that's even possible. But when I started scrolling through the mountain men stories, there was a lot of people and they were all from Alaska. So I listened and the people really seem credible and I don't know. I didn't know what to think. So there's, certainly strange things out there happening right yeah like ancient architecture with huge doorways like why is everything so big when man was supposed to be shorter back then i just it doesn't doesn't equate i, I don't you know what i mean like with a mule <laughs> and like and a horse you're going to build this massive structure and i just it doesn't work out for me especially being in the trades like architecture like how, how things are built how things are made who's going to go through the expense of of building this huge thing and God knows how long it takes, but uh, it makes a lot more sense if, if you have someone that's 20 foot tall, that can move, you know, a five ton stone around fairly easy. All right, James. Well, I think that pretty well answers all of my questions. Do you have anything else that you'd like to add to the interview? No, man. I love the channel. You're doing a great job. Um, Keep helping people get, get their story out there. Um, people people uh people should hear this it's the other side of a coin that no one wants to talk about half them the most people don't even wouldn't even bother with this topic um but i think uh i think eventually maybe it'll come out (laughs) i don't i don't i'm not too sure about that but uh we'll have to write it out and see what happens in the future yes sir thank you very much i appreciate it yes sir and you have yourself an excellent evening you too thank you Thank you. Take care. You too. That encounter really freaked me out, and I appreciate you for opening up and telling us all about it. I interviewed a gentleman not too long ago from the west side of Oklahoma who claims he's seen a Wendigo. And the Oklahoma man's description of the Wendigo lines up with this man's description. If it had babies, it sounds like it's a breeding creature, and he saw possibly a female. I would hate to see what the male Wendigo looks like. I figured I would switch things up for you guys, and I have to log it down. I can't be like the BFRO and laugh it off. This is the second time I have heard a grown man tell me he has seen a Wendigo, and I know there will be more. It's a real thing and the Native Americans warned us of these types of things. If you have encountered a Wendigo, please email me at sasquatchtheory at outlook.com and I think James would really appreciate someone else validating this creature existing. I could see this creature being a reason why the government would want to cover up Bigfoot. I mean, it just opens up a whole can of worms. Yes, Bigfoot's real. What about Dogman? Yes, that's real too. What about Wendigo? And the train keeps moving. It never ends and there's always something stranger around the bend. 
If you would like to help support the channel, you can purchase some new merchandise, and I will leave links for you guys down in the description below. Alright, I appreciate everyone for watching. Take care everyone, and be safe. Till the next one. Thank <laughs> you.